as entrepreneurs, we all want to make a huge difference. And one of the ways we can do is be extremely productive. Now, one of the concepts that most of us aren't really familiar with is happiness and a happiness advantage and how that can increase our success as an entrepreneur, not only in the increased productivity, but in a great life. We're all in business, not for more business, but for a great life. I have a remarkable, talented individual. He's a best-selling author, speaker, trainer, coach, uh, and really serial entrepreneur as well. Uh, Sean Aker is an amazing guy. I've had the opportunity to get to know him over the years, read all his books, and I'll tell you, you are in for a special treat of getting a huge advantage. I'm John Bowen. We're at AES Nation. It's all about accelerating your success. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss any of this. Ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep, think bold, drive hard, watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com Sean, I am so excited to have you here. Uh, I had you speak three or four years ago to my mastermind group of top financial advisors after reading your book, uh, The Happiness Advantage. And I just saw that there is, you know, I, and I gotta be honest with you, I was a little scared bringing you in front of all these left brain dominic, you know, logical <laughs> guys and so on. And you were such a hit because you did what so many other people who talk about positive psychology can't do is you really related to how big of impact it could have on their life and the life of everyone around them. So, you know, thank you for joining us and sharing your uh, insights today. John, it's a thrill. Thank you so much for having me. Well, on. And, and Sean, I mean, you know, this is a message that's really resonated. Just pulling up as we're getting ready for the podcast, your TED Talk has now had over 12 million views. Your books are bestsellers. I mean, you're working with Oprah to <laughs> with a course. And we're going to talk about this. But, you know, give me a little bit of the backstory of, you know, I mean, you're, you're a pretty happy guy. I've seen you in many, many settings now. And but, you know, this, the research on happiness and sharing it with the world, how did this all come about? Well, I fell into it backwards. Uh, I am a happy person uh, and I'm getting, I believe, happier each day, but it was work. It took effort to be able to do. I was planning on being an academic and I was actually at the Divinity School studying Christian and Buddhist ethics at Harvard Divinity School. And while I was there, some people in the psychology department said, we can now quantify if somebody's becoming more compassionate or if they have greater meaning in their life or they feel happier. And so I was, I, I, I had no idea how you'd measure some of those things, but as soon as I saw that you could, I got fascinated by it. But the, the thing that, you know, and you were talking about the uh, getting to come and speak at your mastermind group is that, you know, we can do all this research in a laboratory where we can control all the variables, but that's not what life looks like at all. Like if you're an entrepreneur, can't control very most variables right like what the market's doing what what's going on in your family what's going on with other entrepreneurs and so part of what i wanted to do is to test this happiness research out in the midst of the messiness of life and what we found was that um well the very first place i started taking this research out to was was banks in the middle of a banking crisis so you're talking about left brain people who are looking at Hey. It, and it was 2008, 2009. It's, this was, I'm in the financial services industry, my main yeah. business. It, this was not a happy time. Uh, you know, we all talk about life intruding. This slammed in here. Yeah, well, I mean, and my sister went to the business school there. And, um, I told her I wanted to start a happiness company in the middle of a banking <laughs> collapse. And she said, this is the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> like, you're a terrible entrepreneur. But what I realized was that People still wanted to be happy, and happiness is a luxury item when things are going well, but in tough times, it becomes a necessity because the human brain actually performs significantly better if you can get the brain to become positive. So what we wanted to do is find out a way, of, can you create happiness in the midst of stress, in the midst of high workload? Can you do it in the midst of the uncertainty of life? And what we saw in the banking industry, we've seen replicated in the mortgage industry, with the healthcare industry, with all the changes that are occurring. We've seen it with technology changing every you know two to three years in terms of the speed. So what we've been finding is that 
every aspect of business has this element of uncertainty. And what's incredible is there are some universals about how we could not only quantify levels of happiness, but we could actually raise people's levels of happiness and doing so raise every single business outcome we know how to test for. And that's, that's when I started to get really excited. Well, that's where I loved your book. I read a number of books prior to it, Sean, on happiness and you know different positive psychology and was really enjoyed the research, but it was kind of, you know, I guess because I live in Northern California, I'm in California, a little soft type thing, even though I grew up in upstate New York in a rural area. Right. And, and I, I'm loving it. But when I read your book and I started seeing the statistics of, yeah, you know, I'll use the one, you know, a 30% or 31% increase in productivity. It was like, wow, this is, you know, you can actually do something that's going to make you feel really good about yourself, your clients, your teammates, your partners, and be more successful. And, you know, that's what we're all about as entrepreneurs is being more successful. And this, this kind of is a real big change because most of us, you know, I mean, when I think of psychology for, you know, po the, the positive part doesn't come up. It's all the negative things we talk about. Yeah, you're so right. Most of the research for the past four decades has been on depression disorder. And what I want to research is what causes the human brain to thrive. And what we've been finding is incredible. Um, you know, when I first got into doing this, when I was in academia, when I was back at Harvard, when I you know, uh, was trying to start up a business, I, I thought if you work harder and work really hard and just put your nose to the grindstone and do everything you're supposed to do, go to every conference and do every, you know, email, if you do all of this, work harder, you'll be more successful. And if you're more successful, then think how happy I'm gonna be. And that formula, as I started speaking to business leaders and professional athletes and, you know, celebrities, that formula doesn't work at all. The success actually doesn't lead to greater levels of happiness when we research it. We, th we think it does. We keep telling ourselves, I'm going to be incredibly happy when I sell a company for $100 million. I'm going to be incredibly happy when you know I get my kid into the right school. But 80% of those Harvard students were going through depression, and 10% of them contemplated suicide. And that's a, a fantastic school. And when I got out into the working world, the people that were paid the most were not necessarily more happy than other people around them. They weren't happier. And so let's just stop for a second i want to capture that because this is so important that you know i remember when you first told me this i, I went to my undergraduate to state school and and I, i'm going geez you know i didn't apply to harvard but i wouldn't have got in <laughs> but if i got there you know that would have been a big deal and you know boy you know excited i'm there and life is great or geez i'm making a million a year on wall street and you know millions and this and that and th this is a thing that we all struggle with is, you know, <laughs> it does it. I, you know, I've sold a, a couple businesses that were fairly, you know, big hits and, yeah. you know, and then it's kind of like now what I'm there and, you know, so what type thing. And, it, and it's an amazing that we all get caught in this and, you know, and you're seeing this over and over again. I want everyone, you know, our viewers or listeners to just think about that because we're, we're all chasing this journey, you know, to get happier and ha be successful, but it's, it, it's not the number <laughs> type thing. Yeah, you're certain. Well, first of all, John, Harvard would have been lucky to have you um, <laughs> given all the successes that you've had. And you're right. Like those successes, you, you're a very positive person, but the successes don't necessarily make you into a happy person. Happiness is something we have to work for. It's something we have to cultivate. It's that, that type of optimism that we have to, it's not something you find, it's something you, you create. But what's amazing is once you put the science on it, it starts to break down our beliefs, especially as entrepreneurs, which is, you know, if I can get through all this work, then I'm gonna feel happier. As soon as I get that deal, I'll feel happier. As soon as I get to the weekend, or as soon as I can stop working 80, 90 hours a week, then I'll feel happier. And it turns out in each one of those moments, it doesn't work scientifically because the human brain, every time you have a success, changes the goalpost of what success looks like. So you do get, you know, you, you win, you get a win today, but you change the goalpost. So you hit your sales target, well, you double your sales target for the next quarter, right? You had double growth earnings this year, we can double them again next year, we can do this. And if that's the case, if happiness exists on the opposite side of success for an entrepreneur, our brain never gets there there's always a gap because we double the number and you know, okay, well, we only go up yeah. to 90%. We're disappointed that we missed yeah. it, but it's a huge success. You know, if we would just a little different framing. But here's the incredible part, switch it around. And what we've been finding in neuroscience and positive psychology is if you actually start by cultivating 
not just greater levels of success, but actually cultivating the things that lead to happiness. That's deeper social connection. You cultivate an optimistic mindset. You cultivate gratitude. You change the way you view stress from a threat to a challenge. Turns out every single business outcome rises dramatically and we can quantify it. You're right, 31% increase in productivity when the human brain goes from neutral to positive, 40% higher likelihood of a promotion. Turns out your brain is three times more creative at seeing solutions to problems you're dealing with. Our sales rise by 37% or 39% more likely to live to age 94. The list goes on and on. The same level, this is my favorite one, the same level of stress has a 23% lower negative effect upon your body. So if your brain is positive. So what that means is the human brain is designed to work best at positive. The problem is most people work at negative or neutral, hoping to get positive in the future. And that actually hamstrings your brain's performance over the next couple of years. And to summarize it in a very quick way, is that if you're right, if you're if someone that's listening to this is more successful for the next five years, their happiness levels actually flatline. They don't move. <laughs> Flip it around, raise your levels of happiness, every single success rate rises that we know how to test for. Let's go to your book, because I mean this is, you know, what I loved about the way you think of happiness is number one, it's a choice. And to me, this is, this is something that I, I quite honestly, I didn't get Sean until I read your book. And then it's, it's one of those blindingly obvious things once you start doing it. So, I mean, maybe can, can you expand because this is such a powerful concept. If you ask somebody why they're not happy, they'll tell you it's something about their genes or their environment. Those are, that's what we've been taught in high school science classes, right? If you um, are unhappy, it's because you have genes for depression or you have genes for obesity or alcoholism. And we do have genes that set the initial baseline, but it turns out that initial baseline is not the end of the story. Or you ask somebody why they're unhappy and they'll say, well, I'm unhappy because I didn't get my bonus. I'm unhappy because my, I'm in debt right now. I'm unhappy because of something that's going on outside of their control. And it turns out in both of those situations, genes and environment, it's very easy and it's, it's actually comforting for us to be able to blame those um, because they're outside of our control. But the problem is we're victims of both of those. We're victims of our environment and victims of our genes. When we started doing the research, we realized that we had actually created a cultural myth that was creating a tyranny over people's uh, belief that change was possible. What we realize now is that there's a third choice. By making small conscious habits habit changes or small changes to your mindset, we can actually trump not only your genes, but eight decades of experience, not only in terms of happiness, but intelligence, creativity, and optimism as well. So what we're finding is these things that we thought we didn't have control over, that we were buffeted by life, turns out we could actually consciously choose to be better than our genes. Uh, it's, it is amazing. And, you know, because, I, I, Sean, I think of it when I was a financial advisor for a lot of my professional career, and I had the privilege of working with some extremely successful, you know, billionaires, as right. well as really some average people that were going through unbelievable crises. And it wasn't that rare for the people that were struggling to be much happier than the multi-billionaire. And, and, and it's just, you know, it, it's, and it was a choice. And I didn't, you know, I recognize it now with the, you know, your work and so on, how they've done it. But they, they had, and you use the term advantage, this happiness advantage. They have a huge advantage when, they're, when they choose, you know, happiness and then, you know, really leverages, you know, again kind of walk us through how i mean this happiness advantage because i can't imagine anybody listening to us or watching us i want some of that i'd like actually a double scoop of that if i could well what's great is you can actually choose to have it that happiness isn't just an inheritance from our genes it's an intention it's something we could cultivate and you're going to catch yourself after listening to this podcast of all the times you'd say well i'll be happy when or i can't feel happy now because of X, something that's outside of my control. What we found, I worked, I, flew, I was working with Swiss bankers. I flew from Zurich down to Zimbabwe and worked with farmers who had lost their land. And these are people who didn't just lose their bonus. They, they were pushing around their money in, in wheelbarrows. Their, cur their currency collapsed. Um, they're living under a military dictatorship. And you could watch them. Definitely, the position was terrible, political and economic instability. But if somebody in the midst of that could deepen their social connection and choose happiness, you could watch the positive people start to rebuild while the negative ones actually stayed stagnant or actually started to deteriorate. So what we found was that as we started studying this positive advantage, it turns out it, it, it 
led into something that we now call the happiness advantage, which is we found that dopamine, which flows through the, the system when your brain is positive, it turns out it not only makes you happier, it turns on all the learning centers in your brain. So as a result of that, what we're now finding is that happiness is actually one of the greatest competitive advantages in the modern economy. That if you are comparing two entrepreneurs with similar skill sets, similar ideas, similar backgrounds, if you can get one to get a positive mindset, that person pushes harder, the resilience is higher, their creativity is higher, their success rates are higher, they're better at connecting to other people. People want to be around positive people. So what we're finding is that, that as we looked at it, you know, we want our kids to be happy, but we also want them to be successful. As we're looking at, you know, standardized test scores in school, that if you wait to get a good grade on the SAT, you've waited too long, that if you go into that with a positive brain, it turns out your standardized test scores rise, your likelihood of getting into the school you want rises. So happiness is actually an incredible advantage. The problem is we keep thinking happiness is the bow on the package, right? That if I get everything I want, then I'll feel happier. And then we keep pushing off happiness for the future. But the key to getting everything you want, at least having a higher likelihood that happiness doesn't guarantee you're going to be a billionaire. It doesn't. I know tons of happy people that work, you know, part time below uh, a living wage. We, we know that that happens. What I'm what what we're finding is that if you have two people in the same situation, the positive person has a huge advantage over the person who is remaining neutral. Now, I was thinking, Sean, you know, as you're talking uh, it wasn't that long ago, I was in Switzerland a few months ago, and I was giving a talk to some of the most successful financial people in the world. I think right. probably the average income is about $5 million. And prior to that, I'd been in Kenya in mud huts. <laughs> yeah. And it was going to be really close. Who was happier in the group? We took the average happiness. I, yeah. I don't know who would have won, but it, it, I mean, they're, they're both pretty happy groups. And they're yeah. you know, successful in their own mind. They're framing and so on. And, and what I love is that you know, I always call it an unfair competitive advantage. You might call it it's a fair competitive advantage. But I mean, this happiness advantage is something that each of us can really use. And once you start incorporating your life, it's so powerful. And then, you know, this is where, you know, when we start talking about not only in our own enlightened self-interest doing it, but, you know, you talk about spreading it around. I mean, the leverage that comes out of this is huge. Yeah, our brains are actually wirelessly connected to one another. People don't realize this because we don't see any wires connecting our brains. But our brains are designed to be wirelessly connected through this mirror neuron network. Inside our brain are these small little small little neurons that basically when you put them together into a system, if I see somebody yawn, I'm more likely to yawn myself. If I see somebody smile, my brain actually starts smiling before I do. And so what's interesting is that it's not just smiles and yawns that spread, but negativity, stress, uncertainty, and, and anxiety spread as well. So if we could find some way of helping people to choose to be resilient in the midst of the challenges they experience, it actually infuses with other people's ability to choose happiness and we can watch their brains uh, actually tilt towards the belief that happiness is a choice for them, which is why we see companies, uh, company cultures become so successful together that if, you know, an entrepreneur doesn't exist on an island, they're working with investors, they're working with partners, they're working with people on their teams. Find some way of getting one of those people positive and they have a dramatic impact upon the people around them and can shift a culture to actually not only become more po positive, but actually become more successful. As a matter of fact, Sean, tomorrow I'm going to my senior team retreat. I have a virtual company or companies and we're all flying together. And this is something that, you know, as you think about just your whole team, you know, particularly your senior team, but your all your employees, your contractors, your clients, this is something that can be repeated over and over again. Let me, let me go to uh, a segment here and it's one called the book of the day. And what I'd, I'd like to do, Sean, I'm going to put up on the screen. I'm not going to give you a choice of recommending anybody else's book but your own. And uh, the happiness advantage, because this has changed. Uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, so many of the financial advisors in my mastermind group, Sean, they bought quantities of this book because they wanted to spread it and share it. And they did workshops and they're, you know, letting and they got so much positive feedback from their clients. And what, what I love is you go into some detail here, and this is you know, you the happiness events, the seven principles of positive psychology, the fuel, success, and performance at work. And Sean, you know, tell us a little bit about what's in the book, because I mean, we can't cover everything on this podcast. You know, what are they going to get? Well, 
I, I think people are spreading it out for the same reason that I wrote the book in the first place, which is as soon as I heard this research, I wanted everyone to know it because I realized that this could help my, my mom and my dad. This could help the people that I'm working with. And the more positive people around me are, the easier it is for me to choose happiness. <laughs> um, but it also, valid. I mean, the book just validates who you are, John. It validates uh, these people who are these positive outliers who are able to make these choices. So what I did in the book is looked at the research of how somebody could actually choose to become more positive, regardless of their starting part point. Maybe they have genes that make them optimistic and they want to strengthen it, or maybe they're in a very dark place or their com company's not doing well, or they've had several you know, businesses fail. Whatever it is, wherever they start with, this is the research we found to help them move, to help choose happiness. And what we were finding was, you can actually make some of these choices within two minutes a day. Making two minute positive habits a day, a single positive habit could actually trump your genes and even eight decades of experience. And those were very simple things. We got people for 21 days in a row to think of three new things that they were grateful for over the past 24 hours and to be specific about it. Um, something like yeah, I Sean, I, I just want to yeah. stop you on that one. That was such an important one to me. I started yeah. keeping a journal after that and just yeah. writing down three. And it, it is, you know, there, anyone who's watching this uh, podcast or listening to it, you have so much in life to be you know, grateful for. And it's not hard to come up with three at all. And that, you know, that positing framing is just, you know, it's, it just, it takes you over. And I think that's been one that, I, you know, you've helped an awful lot of people, but I mean, there, you've got a whole bunch of others that they can use and really just, you know, make some big success on this change. Yeah. So that's, that's what the book focuses on. Um, but what I love about the gratitude one, it doesn't even matter what you're grateful for. What matters is your brain takes 45 seconds a day to scan the world for three new things you're grateful for. And what it does is it trains your brain to not only get stronger than that, but when you go back to looking at all the problems you need to fix within your life, all the fires you need to put out, it turns out your brain unconsciously scans the world for the positive as well. And we can get people who are low level genetic pessimist to turn into low-level optimist in just a six-week period of time. Incredibly powerful. We got people to journal about a positive experience each day for just two minutes, just one positive memory. And we got people with chronic neuromuscular diseases to do this for six weeks in a row. And six months later, they can drop their pain medication by 50%, which is incredible. I mean, the, a two-minute intervention could transform our health. Uh, at, at Google, we're getting them to take their hands off of their keyboard for two minutes a day and just watch their breath go in and out. They're already sitting at a keyboard. We just make them watch their breath go in and out. If you do this, you're going to feel two minutes behind. But if you do this each day, but if you do it, turns out that that small moment of just watching uh, single tasking causes your brain's accuracy rates to improve by 10% over the course of the day. Your mood improves, happiness levels improve, and stress levels drop. And the most powerful one we did out of Facebook, we had people for 21 days in a row. Every day they got to work, their first job was to write a two-minute positive email praising or thanking somebody they know. So it's an external source of, of happiness. But what's great is not only do you get great emails back from people, but if I test your social connection 21 days later, your social connection score is off the chart. And the reason why that's important to entrepreneurs and to all of us is that social connection is the greatest predictor of long-term happiness we have. The breadth, depth, and meaning in our social relationships trumps every other positive attempt that we make to create greater levels of happiness. And if we do this, if we can increase social connection, it it is as predictive of how long we'll live as obesity, high blood pressure, or smoking. So we fight so hard against the negative. I mean, I know people that are you know, watching this podcast are, are, are healthy, they're health conscious. They're trying to do all these things to live longer and to get that just that small edge. And they're looking at their olive oils and they're making sure it's organic food and all these types of things. When literally a two minute positive habit can extend your life as much as stopping smoking. But if we got you to write the two minute positive habit while you're at work or to start your day, turns out not only do your success rates rise, rise over the course of the day, but your likelihood of losing weight rises dramatically, your likelihood of smoking uh, rises dramatically, and you create entire constellations of positive habits. And it's all free too. Yeah, it's hard as a business person, yeah, right? No, this is <laughs> about, <laughs> yeah, no, this is, well, we got some books and we're gonna talk about some resources, oh, no, but I mean, you know, the, 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 yeah, the, but I mean, the, the, the cost of doing this, I mean, to get that kind of, you know, we spend, you know, you know, many of us, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars to get little incremental improvements. So this, this is amazing. Sean, let me go to the next segment, which is uh, the app 
uh, application of the day that you would recommend on your smartphone? What, what jumps out that you would want to share with your fellow entrepreneurs? Well, this isn't my app. This is one that I love, though, that I use it's called Happify, H-A-P-P-I-F-Y. And they've just done a great job of taking a lot of this positive psychology information and making it uh, in, in mobile format so people could actually go through many courses on the app. Um, and, and they're just doing phenomenal work, not only in happiness, but in the healthcare space as well. So they're a great one. Uh, let me put it up on the screen so everybody has it. Remember, everything, all the show notes, the transcript and everything will be at uh, AESNation.com. And then, Sean, let's go to uh, resources. And you've got a bunch of resources you're working on that are really powerful. And as a matter of fact, let me pull up, uh, well, what would be the first website I should show on the screen for those who are watching it on video? I think the main one, you know, I know a lot of people that are watching this are probably interested in the research. If you are, if you want to get just sort of the jumping off place to learn more about positive psychology, just happinessadvantage.com. Um, that brings you to my main website. And from there, we've got links to the research that we were just talking about today in very short form. It's got new research we're doing. We've got a, a newsletter you could join if you want to just keep up with the research that's coming out. Um, I'm on a couple of those newsletter lists myself just because there's so much research that's coming out. Um, so th I think that that's a great starting place. There's a 12 minute free TED talk that you can see there. But the, the resource that I love is it, the other one we were talking about. And you can get there from that website as well. But it's at Oprah.com slash happiness. And that is the uh, the course that we've been working on with Oprah to ha to get people to basically do what we were doing at Harvard. We create a semester long class and we tried to make it push it down into just 21 days to get all this research and th these videos out. So for five to 10 minutes a day, you watch a mini lecture and then you create these positive habits and you can track yourself over time and you get access to these video case studies of people I interviewed, like the head of people at Google and senior marketers at Buick and McKinsey and all these incredible places are making these positive changes. Um, but it's the best thing we've created so far about if somebody wants to do this, if they want to move from, from information to transformation, it's been incredible. This is great. Let me go over the key takeaways that I'm getting from this so that we can create some action here. And when I look at this and, and you know, I'm looking at my notes, Sean, and this is just, I mean, you know, this message has resonated. 12 million uh, TED Talks is a huge viewing audience, uh, you know, being invited to be on Oprah, but not only that, actually building a program with her. And I've seen you in some pretty tough audiences <laughs> and you inspire everyone to action. And so I, I want everybody to go over kind of what we talked about. Number one, this is a choice. We get to make, you know, a happiness choice. and. And boy, make the right choice. It's an unfair competitive advantage, the happiness advantage. And then, you know, spread it. This is not a limited resource. And, and if you want to be more successful, and I'm going to encourage everyone, I mean, you know, minimum read uh, Sean's book. Uh, I will be, Sean, signing up for the uh, Oprah class because, uh, you know, it's just, I, you know, what a inexpensive investment to get this kind of productivity increase and feel good about it until. Yeah. Now, so Sean, with that, I want to thank you and I want to encourage everyone, you know, to go to AESNation.com, you know, download the transcript. There's so many pearls of wisdom here. Uh, go to Sean's site, buy the book, do the class, and let's make sure that we spread it. Our clients, our future clients, our strategic partners, our teammates, they're all counting on us. Don't let them down. We wish you the best of success. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me come on. Exceptional, remarkable breakthroughs. AESNation.com.